Wow. Mm, nice. So these are a few self-portraits that I just have in the studio. This is quite dusty. I've done a fair amount of self-portraits. Not really that many, actually. Maybe four pretty serious ones in my whole life. I try to do them once a month. I never really hit that mark, which is embarrassing because it doesn't take that long to do a self-portrait. These are specifically to practice. I'm not gonna sell these. I'm not gonna show them at a gallery. It's to improve and practice. Like training to be an athlete. You drill, you do different technique practices, and then during the game, you try to use those skills. It's the same thing for painting and drawing. I think that's my little spiel, like learning a language, like learning to drive, like learning to play a sport. You gotta drill, you gotta practice. So, we're gonna do a self-portrait. So a lot of artists use mirrors to paint from life when they do self-portraits and that's probably the best way because painting from life is, is the hardest thing and it's also the best practice, but I don't really like to use mirrors. So I take embarrassing selfies of myself. Here's my self-portrait, this embarrassing selfie. It's fine, but there's reasons why I took it like this and it, and it looks like that. First of all, the light. I have it right here, by the way, some good reference. A really glossy photo and a not so one. But you know, this, this photo, there's Obvious, there's an obvious light source coming into my face. One side is obviously in the light with highlights and the other majority side of the face is in shadow. Now, you can see all these shadows and they're beautiful and, and it's split up with light and dark and so that helps me and in my opinion is a more dynamic portrait or, or, or shot of the face with highlights and shadows. When the, like right here in this video, my whole face is kind of in the light, you know, the light source is directly behind me straight on. There's not, you know, there's shadows on the side and in my, you know, um, in the eyes, but this to me is way more dynamic to paint and it's actually, it helps me to paint more successfully because you map shadows and we'll talk about that later. But again, another thing about this photo that I like is I'm kind of looking up, I'm looking up into the, the distance, off into the distance. And I did that because I love like old Renaissance, 15th, 14th, 16th century paintings of like priests or specifically angels that are kind of just like super delicate, like they're floating, like they're not looking directly at anything, they're just looking off into space. I love that and um, I have some reference actually. I have a little bookshelf in the other room, a measly bookshelf with a few books that I have on super famous artists, so let's take a look. Okay. Oh God. So let's put that there. Michelangelo, a famous sculptor, painter, did the Sistine Chapel, did the David. Guy's a genius. Caravaggio, another brilliant painter, started painting at the end of the 16th century. Guy's crazy. Botticelli, I don't really know much about him, but I, you know, he did the Birth of Venus, super famous painting. These are just all famous books. This is a Verrocchio. He was the teacher of Leonardo, um, Da Vinci, and Michelangelo, and a bunch of other people. I love Renaissance style paintings, all the great masters. I don't know a lot about them. I love traditional classic painting. So I love to look at these things and there's a lot of things going on within the, the old Renaissance style and the Baroque period. And I don't really know a lot about that, honestly, but I love to look at it and I love to read and I know what I know. I just thought I'd make a public service announcement, but let's look at some of these things I'm talking about. You see how these guys are kind of just like lucidly looking in the space, you know, they're not really looking at anything. I like that. Let's find more. You know, like this person is just looking out in the distance, probably praying to God or this is Michelangelo, you know, this guy is probably talking or acknowledging this little angel, little baby, but it's like he doesn't care, you know? He's just like, oh, slightly turning, using minimal effort. You know what I mean? Like, look at how laxed this stare is. It's just like uber mellow. It's like she's looking at these people, but it's like she's looking through them or something. I don't know. That's all I got. I wanted to show some, some context. I'm sorry if I went down a little rabbit hole there on a tangent, but any excuse I have to whip out those old books of the painters, I'm gonna do it. Now that I've actually looked at the books, it's not very similar to what I was talking about, but that's what I was going for, so we're gonna roll with it. Let's get the materials ready and start painting, finally. I am sweating, but we're ready. We got the loose piece of linen, um, which I had a bunch of primed pieces of linen 
that I did a while ago and I just cut it down to size. I think it's 16 by 20. It's taped up on this piece of styrofoam, um, this thick piece just to be a nice backing. You know, it's a little jank, but it works for me and that's all good. Other than that, we got the paintbrushes set up. We got my little easel, piece of custom glass that I made. We got the mediums. We got the paint. We're absolutely prepared. It's so exciting. I really enjoy beginning stages of like everything. It takes a while to set it up and the camera and the, the talking and the getting the paint and everything. But once I actually get to do the paint to canvas, it's so great. And you know, this time, really quick synopsis of my, my goals for this little painting is just to be loose. I, I always go into the detail, the little minute things, everything has to be perfect and it's not a good habit. I wanna start loose, so I wanna start with a bigger paintbrush. I wanna put random values in as I go. I wanna use different colors. I'm gonna start off with structure and more of outline things like the academic route because that, it helps me find more success, but we're trying to get loose. We're trying to get weird and loose. Let's begin finally. Rough start, we're gonna kind of start over-ish. It was just the first five, six minutes, but we're gonna, we're gonna try this again. So I did the blocking in stage, it took about 40 minutes and this is kind of like a bigger deal in terms of how successful the entire painting is gonna be. Is it gonna look like me? Is it gonna look like the reference I have? You know, this stage is important to ensure those things. But like I said before, there's beautiful shadows here and that helps me map out the form. So I mapped the shadows, that's what these lines are four, you know, these are where the shadow, the separation between super light, super dark. Obviously it's not just one and one, but when you map these things out, it helps you give you like a roadmap to the other forms where the light is, where the dark is. Having the, you know, the contrast between light and darks gives your subject form. So we're gonna move forward. I got, I'm just gonna lay in crazy values. We got super light on the forehead, nose, dark all over here. I'm gonna put a little GoPro so you can see some of the paint mixing, I think, and uh, we're just gonna move forward. All right, that was like another 40 minute paint session. I'm feeling good. I'm having an absolute blast painting this. Staying loose. It's hard. I'm forcing myself. As you can see, it's just the jambalaya mashup. The ugly painting stage, people say. Mush. But I have a plan and I'm feeling confident about it. The colors aren't the best, but it's just great. I'm having a great time. We're going to do the hat, hair, lips, and shirt, and then the whole thing will be covered with oil paint. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back in, do some more detail work, Oil paint is a 3D substance, you know, it's not just a 2D thing, it's obviously on this 2D piece of paper, but it is, you know, it, it, it's able to be molded and sculpted. So after I fill everything in, I'm gonna put a little more details, but I'm also gonna mold and sculpt the paint to move everything around a little more, if that makes sense. And then we'll let it dry, we'll come back in a day or two and finish her on up. So we're here two days later, it's all dry. And like I said, that's how I kind of like to work in these practice style um, oil paintings. I do two layers, you know, first layer, get all the paint on the canvas, mediumly developed, let it dry, come back, second layer, 
touch it up, make it pearly, and uh, fix a lot of things. I have to fix a lot of things. I know that the eyes are, you know, looking really bug-eyed like some crazy person. I know that. My eyes do look buggy in the picture, but these are just unacceptable. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to go darker, I think, in the dark side, and I will go lighter. You know, I usually leave the lights for the last part, you know, the super highlight points on the nose and forehead, you can see. Um, it, got, it has to get lighter than that. Same with this cheek perhaps the chin, you know, and the collarbone neck. So I have all that work to do. So we're just gonna keep on trudging, um, but you know, it's not mega serious. It's just having fun, practicing, trying to get these things down, the goals I made for myself. Let's go. So this was about a six, seven hour painting total, you know, pretty much two, three hour sessions. And I had an absolute blast. I'm, I'm super happy with the outcome. I think it's my most successful self-portrait. You know, I'm no professional oil painter, newsflash, I'm no professional, you know, painter, but I, I do take it seriously. And what I mean by that is I take, I push a lot of my time to study things like this and to practice, you know. Came out a nice portrait. You know, there's things wrong with it. It's not perfect by any means, but I, I use the time in this painting to really focus on technique, mixing colors. My goal was to stay loose. And by that, I mean the paint strokes and how I approached, you know, building up the values and the details. And I really do think I did um, or achieved my goal. It's the loosest painting I think I've done. And it's very stylized in a way I really like with different tiles of color everywhere. It's not super smooth and blended, which, you know, I tried not doing. So it was successful for me. And I, you know, maybe just, you know, half of a 1% leveled up. And for me, that's a success. Um, again, I think there's things wrong with it, like it might be too long, the face, by a couple millimeters, it's hard to tell, something with the eyes. The colors aren't certainly, you know, beautifully, you know, mixed, but um, it, it, it's all a learning process. And, you know, if you really want to improve on a serious, you know, in a serious way, you have to allocate time to put in this. You know, people have this desire where they want to become successful at painting in like three weeks, which is just, was, which is just outlandish to think. It takes months and months and years to improve and you have to you have to really train you have to really practice um and some people i guess aren't willing to do that some people certainly are and then you know they see themselves improve at a at a crazy pace and it's it's exciting but you know that's all i got like i said i don't have all the answers i'm no professional this is just what i do how i like to practice and maintain my oil practice so we're gonna end with that hopefully you enjoyed the video we got a bunch of crazy awesome projects in the future we're gonna get weird together so i'll see you in the next video Whew.